If the vaccine proves as effective as Pfizer says, how soon might it become available for the general public? It's, it's obviously not just Pfizer. They're going to need a lot of government coordination to roll this thing out. Right. Well, they said shortly they'll have something like 50,000 doses. That's not much when you consider the 330,000 Americans. Uh, they're projecting that sometime during the summer uh, of 2021, they will have enough vaccines to uh, protect a large segment of the population. But again, I think people ought to put this in perspective. What we're likely to get is something like the flu vaccine. It's not necessarily going to protect you from infection, and it may not uh, work for everyone, but it should be uh, useful for many people. Uh, and it should moderate the severity of disease that most people who receive the vaccine get. That's what we're likely to get. Uh, but it is good news. Now, uh, so that's, I think, what we should be expecting at this point. Doctor, I don't know who's calling you moments ago, but you might want to let them know every day at nine o'clock, they could watch a really good show right here on MSNBC <laughs> and know that you're on it right now. Um, right. We're talking about good news for the future, but let's get in the present. Dr. Scott Gottlieb pointed out some grim realities. New COVID cases are accelerating faster than testing. And at this point, the national positivity rate is at 9.5 percent. What does that tell you about the scope of how fast this virus is now spreading? This is really serious. And the other thing I think we should uh, put in perspective is what can a vaccine do to stop what's happening today? And the answer is nothing. The only thing that is going to slow down this pandemic is if people start wearing masks, stop congregating, don't go to bars at night, believe that almost everybody they meet has a really good chance of being infected, maybe one in 10 in chance of being infected. You've got to protect yourself, protect your family, protect your parents. It's really serious. So I think what this new task force is going to do is emphasize on what we can do right now. We just have to look at some place like France to realize we're about one third of the way to where they are on a per capita basis. That means we're headed very quickly toward 300,000 people per day being infected. That is really a serious event. This is what everybody predicted, as you well know, when we followed the president's advice to just let this thing roll. And now it is rolling in a way that is truly terrifying to everybody in public health and should be terrifying to most citizens of the United States. Well, a lot of people didn't necessarily let it roll, but they let it rip this weekend. We saw celebrations around the country for President-elect Biden. And yes, we saw a lot of people wearing masks, but there were a lot of people congregating and all of that, with all that singing, dancing and drinking, masks weren't, were not on all the time. How concerned are you? I'm worried about that. And I'm worried about the Notre Dame situation where all the fans flocked onto the field. The fans shouldn't even been at that game. How come there were fans at the game to crowd the field? I think people really aren't taking this as seriously as they should. This is a deadly epidemic that can kill up to one person. Now it's killing about one person a minute and could soon kill two or three people a minute. This is not a joke. And I, as uh, Tony Fauci said, we're headed toward, if we don't change what we're doing, a million people a day being infected. That is truly horrific. Well, we're seeing reports that there could be 2,200 deaths a day by the time right. Joe Biden takes office. Given that reality, what would he need to do day one to turn this around? Well, I think he's doing it day minus 70, which is start warning people that this is a deadly epidemic. They've got to wear masks. They can't congregate together. There is not only good news on the vaccine front. There is now a remote possibility that a nasal spray can prevent infection as well, which would be easier to manufacture. I think we've got to put everything in process to use the full power of the federal government 
to control this pandemic, whether it's through public health measures, making sure that the vaccines get distributed fairly and as fast as possible, and making sure that other new processes, for example, the nasal spray I just uh, mentioned, gets adopted as fast as possible. There are things we can do, which are both from public health and the medical perspective, which are hopeful. And I think we need to take full advantage of those. And the only organization in the US that has the power, the money, and the capability is the federal government, which has so far stayed its hand. We need it fully engaged to protect us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.